Good morning. I'm here today to announce that my office has charged Harvey Weinstein with sexually assaulting two women in Los Angeles County. We believe the evidence will show that the defendant used his power and influence to gain access to his victims and then committed violent crimes against them. In the complaint we filed earlier today, we allege that the first sexual assault took place on February 18, 2013, in a Los Angeles hotel room. For those crimes, Defendant Weinstein is charged with one felony count each of forcible rape, forcible oral copulation, and sexual penetration by use of force. He also faces one felony count of sexual battery by restraint of another woman. We allege the second assault took place the next evening in a hotel suite in Beverly Hills. Each of these victims told at least one person about the assault in 2013. They reported the crimes to police in 2017. Their cases were presented to my office for criminal case filing consideration later in that year. If convicted as charged in the case, Defendant Weinstein faces up to 28 years in state prison. My office will ask the court to set bail at $5 million. Once the defendant's case is completed in New York, we expect him to appear in a courtroom in Los Angeles County to face these charges. As you know, he is awaiting trial in New York City. In all, eight women came forward to report that they were sexually assaulted by the defendant in Los Angeles County. Three of those alleged crimes took place outside of the statute of limitations and for that reason we have declined to file charges in those three cases. We continue to investigate allegations involving three other women to determine if additional criminal charges will be filed. We cannot comment further on this case at this time. However, I want to commend the victims who have come forward and bravely recounted what happened to them. This is the first criminal case filed by the task force that I created in November of 2017 in response to the sexual assault allegations in the entertainment industry. More than 40 cases have been presented to my office for possible criminal filing during the past two years. Most have been declined for criminal prosecution for one of two reasons. The alleged crimes were too old to prosecute or there was insufficient credible evidence to file criminal charges against the defendant. As in any criminal case, a prosecutor must be able to prove the defendant is guilty of a crime beyond a reasonable doubt to be able to file criminal charges against any person. For these and many other reasons, sexual assault cases are among the most challenging to prosecute. In California, though, we are empowering victims of sexual violence and doing what we can to make sure that the criminal justice system works for them. With changes in state law, victims of certain sex crimes occurring in California after January 1st, 2017, will no longer be subject to these statute of limitations issues. I supported these charges, um, I supported these changes, excuse me, because the sexual predators should not go free simply because it took time for a victim to report the crimes against them. California law also permits prosecutors to call victims of uncharged sexual assaults into a courtroom to testify that a defendant has a propensity to commit sex crimes, providing valuable supporting evidence for other sex crime victims. I want victims to know that just because we may lack sufficient evidence to charge their assailant, it does not mean that a crime did not occur. It simply means that the evidence was not strong enough to meet our filing standards. To those victims, I want you to know we see you, we hear you, and we believe you. And while a criminal case may not have been filed, it is my hope that all victims of sexual violence find strength and healing as they move forward. 
We need the voices of all victims to help us remove sexual predators from our community and protect others from these violent crimes. I want to thank the deputy district attorneys and the DAI investigators assigned to my task force for their very hard work and dedication to seeking justice. I want to thank also the Beverly Hills and Los Angeles Police Departments for their tireless work to thoroughly investigate the allegations against the defendant. Joining me today are Los Angeles Police Chief Michael Moore and Beverly Hills Police Chief Sandra Spagnoli. Now I would like to introduce Chief Moore who will say a few words. Thank you, Jackie, and I will keep my remarks brief. In summary, I want to thank the men and women of the Robbery Homicide Division who have tirelessly worked not just this investigation but a series of other investigations involving sexual violence uh, in the Hollywood entertainment industry. For far too long, uh, women and, and other victims have been preyed upon by uh, primarily men, men of, who feel from their position of power that they can take advantage of women and that those women will remain silent. I want to congratulate the, the work of, of these investigators to tirelessly build cases that would allow us to open this chapter involving Mr. Weinstein today. Secondly, as D.A. Lacey indicated, to each of the victims who have stepped forward to the Los Angeles Police Department, now, this is one instance in which cases have been filed, and there are many other instances in which we've not reached that point yet. But to them, I extend a, a, a hand of support and strength and ask them to remain committed to these investigations. As investigators call, there may be additional follow-up or efforts that are made to further deepen their investigation, and we need their continued involvement. To support people, those that are friends, family members of these victims, Please continue to encourage them, continue to give them the, the strength and the ability to withstand the, the types of questions and turmoil that these cases uh, renew as far as these vicious attacks that occurred upon uh, these, these, these women in their lives. Uh, lastly, to victims that are out there who are yet unknown, the Los Angeles Police Department, as does the Beverly Hills Police Department, every law enforcement agency in this county stands willing and able to take your information and will aggressively pursue every lead to bring to justice those individuals who would prey upon you. Again, I thank the District Attorney's Office, District Attorney Lacey and her team for opening this next chapter against an individual who has gotten, along, gotten away with too much for too long. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, now, Chief Spagnoli will say a few words from the Beverly, she's from the Beverly Hills Police Department. Thank you. So good morning. Uh, today we stand with our partner agencies and support the victims of Harvey Weinstein, those who have come forward to report crimes to law enforcement, but also potentially, as Chief Moore said, potentially others who have not. We also know that they have been deeply affected by the horrendous crimes perpetrated by a sexual predator. I want to first start by thanking the District Attorney Jackie Lacey herself for establishing a task force and a single point of contact for these cases, giving us the ability as law enforcement to coordinate our investigative efforts throughout Los Angeles County. Our investigators and task force members have worked diligently on each of these cases. Since 2017, several women have come forward and reported crimes committed by Harvey Weinstein to the Beverly Hills Police Department. And I want to personally thank those women for the courage to share their stories and the trust that they have placed in us to investigate their cases. Their statements have been crucial to this investigation. I also want to thank the entire investigative team of the Beverly Hills Police Department who handled these cases uh, with pride. Last, I encourage other victims who have not come forward, emboldened by today's news, that the law enforcement community takes these crimes seriously and to please contact the Beverly Hills Police Department. We have committed to leaving no stone unturned, and if there is anyone who believes that they've been victimized, let us support you and know that you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief Spagnoli. And I want to take a few questions, but please remember this is a pending case and we're very limited in what uh, more we can say at this time. Jackie, I 
No. Um, they were presented in 2017, and uh, they were for, they happened in 2013. So they were pre presented. In terms of what was happening is we were uh, working on investigating those cases. With regard to the victims in this case and in, and in other sexual assault cases, it was very challenging uh, to uh, get those uh, victims to open up and tell us uh, what they needed to tell us. It was very, for some it was embarrassing, it was terrifying. And so uh, until then we were just working to see if we could get the evidence we needed to get to court. Jackie, yes, hang on, hang on, yes. I do not know the answer to the question with regard to the New York trial, and I don't know the answer to the question of whether they have come out publicly. Uh, I would defer to Paul Thompson. They have. Okay. They have. Neither of them have come out publicly. One of them is expected to testify in New York. Well, it, uh, no. The bottom line is we had been working on this case quite diligently in the last, um, the last couple of years, and uh, it turns out that coincidentally our case was ready to go this year, and this is the first business day where we could get everyone together that we needed in order to do this. There's a lot of people that go behind filing a case of this nature, and we needed to make sure that we had all hands uh, on deck. Right. Uh, well, right now, uh, the New York case, from what I understand from the New York prosecutors, is starting today. Witness jurors will be selected tomorrow. We do not want to, at this point, interfere uh, with the New York case. The judge there will have to make a decision, though, whether he remains out on $2 million bail since we filed an arrest warrant. Uh, with more victims and $5 million bill, he'll have to decide whether the defendant is remanded or not. Uh, but in any case, uh, we're in touch with the, uh, with the defendant's attorneys here in L.A., and uh, we will be working to figure out uh, how to get him here, whether he'll be, if he's in custody, obviously we'll have to have him extradited or ordered back. Uh, but there may be a situation where we uh, come to an agreement with the attorneys where he surrenders himself. But those details will be worked out in the next right. few days. Do you expect to uh, use other victims, uncharged victims, which you can under California law to present to the jury in this case? I would imagine we would. Obviously, other uncharged victims, even if they're outside the statute of limitations, can at times under California law be used to prove motive. Uh, opportunity, identity, things of that nature. So we will, in fact, uh, be looking at what evidence we have. And, and we also are encouraging others, if you're out there and you have not reported your crime uh, to the police, please come forward now. It's not too late. You may think your charges are too old uh, or not provable or no one would believe you. But uh, we are encouraging any victims of uh, Mr. Weinstein's assault to come forward to the police now, come forward to your local police, and uh, we will take a statement from you, and it may, in fact, be helpful to this case. Can you talk about um, how unusual it is to have uh, someone charged with sexual assault when you have two different victims on two separate and two you know, subsequent days? Like, that seems fairly unusual that you would have two attacks. Yeah. Uh, with regard to um, sex, sex crimes, there is no usual in our vocabulary. It, it is one of those things where we never know, uh, and it's, it's, it's just not that unusual. For us, we uh, accept the evidence as it comes, and it really is driven a lot by uh, the predator's behavior. So for us, it, it, it is not that unusual. I saw a hand over here. Thank you, Ms. Weissey. Um, Forgive me if you've already covered this, but can you describe the circumstances in which these two victims came into contact with law enforcement? 
Well, um, my, un my understanding is that uh, when it was announced that Mr. Uh, Weinstein had sexually assaulted others, these victims were motivated to uh, contact their, an attorney and also to contact the police, and that's how we learned about them, is direct contact through the police. And in one case, Beverly Hills, the other case. Correct, correct. correct. Well, we've just begun our case, so we've just filed our case. So our trial, uh, should it go to trial, would not pay, take place for quite some time. So we're beginning our case. At some point in the future, there will be an arraignment. That's the next step. And uh, that'll be determined uh, to some degree by when he is available to be brought here from New York. In terms of Well, I, I don't want to get into uh, the specifics of the case because people have to testify under oath what they saw. But uh, preliminarily, before you could charge any defendant with a crime like this, you would at least need to establish that he was there. One more question. All right. Thank you. Else well. uh, and again, forgive me if you already covered this, but the other cases you've been looking at, have you reached resolutions in all of them, or are there still cases where you're, you're yet to make filing decisions? There are still cases where we're yet to make filing decisions. I believe there are three yes. where we're yet to make filing decisions. Sorry, can I ask one more question? Do you know if either of these victims have specific civil cases against the defendant? That I am not aware of. All right. Thank you very much.